Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the characteristics of EIGRP and we'll do a basic configuration as well. So EIGRP stands for the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. Its predecessor was IGRP, but that's a really old legacy protocol. It's not used anymore. EIGRP is great protocol, sports large networks. It has a very fast convergence time, way quicker than RIP that you saw in the last section. It supports bounded updates where network topology change updates are only sent to routers affected by the change. So it's more efficient. It doesn't flood information everywhere when it doesn't need to. Add messages are sent using multicast rather than broadcast. So they'll only be processed by other EIGRP routers, again, making it more efficient. EIGRP will automatically perform equal cost load balancing on up to four paths by default. You can manually increase that up to 16 paths that it can load balance over if you want to. So it will do equal cost load balancing by default. EIGRP is also the only routing protocol that can also do unequal cost load balancing. So all of the other routing protocols, if there's multiple paths that have got the same metric, then they can load balance over those equal cost paths. But EIGRP, it can have multiple paths with unequal metrics, and you can configure it to load balance over those different paths. It won't do it automatically, though. So you're going to have to manually configure it if you want to do that. Okay, so looking at the EIGRP configuration, to enable it, we say router EIGRP and then an AS number at global config. The AS is the autonomous system number, meaning an independent administrative domain. EIGRP routers need to have the same AS number to peer with each other. So you could have, say, two different organizations that have got an extranet with each other, so they're connected connected and we're both using EIGRP internally. In that case, they would use two different AS numbers. So organization A would have its AS number and it would have its internal routes. Organization B would have a different AS number and it would have its own internal routes. And EIGRP between the two organizations, even though it's physically connected, would not peer. They wouldn't be sharing information with each other. So after you have enabled EIGRP globally with router EIGRP and the AS number, the next command to put in is the network command. This specifies which interfaces are going to participate in EIGRP. The network mask uses a wildcard mask, which is the inverse of a subnet mask. To figure out what the wildcard mask should be, subtract each octet in the subnet mask from 255 to calculate that wildcard mask. For example, a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0 would equal a wildcard mask of 0.0.255.255, .0 the inverse. And if you had a subnet mask of 255.255.255.252, this one's not so obvious, that would equal a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.3. Because 255 minus 255 is 0, 255 minus 252 is 3. So that's how you figure out what the wildcard mask would be. If you don't enter a wildcard mask, for example, if you put a network 10.0.0.0 without the wildcard mask, the command defaults to using the classful boundary. So that would be 0.255.255.255, the wildcard mask for a class A address, 0.0.255.255 for class B, and 0.0.0.255 for a class C address. That's just the inverse of the standard subnet mask for our different classful networks. 
Okay, this is important because it can be confusing about what the network command means. So this is the definition. If you say network 10.0.0.0, then a wildcard mask 0.0.255.255. What it means is look for interfaces with an IP address which falls within that range. So any interface in this example that has got an IP address that begins with 10.0 and then anything after that would be a match. When we do have a match on an interface, and it can be multiple interfaces with one network command, enable EIGRP on those interfaces, meaning send out and listen for EIGRP hello messages and peer with any adjacent EIGRP routers on the same link. Then once the EIGRP peer has been set up, advertise the network and mask, which is configured on those interfaces. Okay, so let's work through a few examples to really explain this. Here, we've said network 10.0.0.0. And on our router R1, we've got three interfaces there. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 has got IP address 10.1.0.1 slash 24. Fast 1 slash 0 is 10.0.1.1 slash 24. And fast 2 slash 0 is 10.0.2.1 slash 24. So you see that all of the interfaces there have got an IP address that begins with 10. So when in EIGRP we configure network 10.0.0.0, that's a class A address which will use a wildcard mask of 0.255.255.255. So it's looking for any interface that begins with 10, which will match all three of our interfaces. EIGRP will be enabled on all the interfaces and the router will peer with any adjacent EIGRP routers that are connected to those same links. The networks that will be advertised are what is configured on the interface. So that is 10.1.0.0 slash 24 on fast 00, 10.0.1.0 slash 24 on fast 1 slash 0, and 10.0.2.0 on fast 2 slash 0. 10.0.0.0 slash 8 is not advertised okay so even though that was what we configured in the network statement so the network statement is 10.0.0.0 and it's really slash 8 we're just looking for interfaces that fall within that range but when we find them we advertise the network that is configured on the interface which is all slash 24s here we do not advertise 10.0.0.0 slash 8. moving on to another example here we are going to specify the wildcard mask. So looking at our router, Fast Ethernet 00, 00 has now got IP address 10.1.0.1 slash 24, Fast 1 slash 0 is 10.0.1.1 slash 24, and Fast 2 slash 0 is 10.0.2.1 slash 24. And under the EIGRP config, we say network 10.0.0.0. 0.0.255.255. .0 so that means look for any interfaces that begin with 10.0 and then it can be anything after that. So that matches interface fast 1 slash 0 and 2 slash 0, but fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 does not match because it starts with 10.1, not 10.0. So here, the networks that would be advertised, again, it's the network that is configured on the interfaces that matched. So that's 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and 10.0.2.0 slash 24. 10.1.0.0 slash 24 on fast 0 slash 0 did not match. So it's not advertised and that interface is not going to be sending out and listening for EIGRP hello messages. Also, the network statement here was a slash 16, but we do not advertise 10.0.0.0 slash 16 because that is not configured on any of the interfaces. If we did want to advertise 10.0.0.0 slash 16, we could do that with a summary address. You'll see how to do that later on, but it's not going to do it automatically. Some more examples just to drive it home again. So here on router R1, we've got the same networks again, 10.1.0.1, 10.0.1.1, and 10.0.2.1. If we said network 10.0.0.0, they all begin with 10, so it would match all of them. 
eigrp would be enabled on all interfaces and we would advertise the slash 24 as configured on the interface another way that we could get the exact same result is we could say network 10.1.0.0 0.0.0.255 that would match the 10.1.0 network network 10.0.1.0 0.0.0.255 would match 10.0.1 and network 10.0.2.0 0.0.0.255 would match 10.0.2 if we wanted to just advertise 10.0.2 we could use the third network statement there network 10.0.2.0 0.0.0.255 and that would only match interface fast ethernet 2 slash 0 it wouldn't match 0 slash 0 or 1 slash 0 okay and one more very similar just showing you another way that we can do it again we've got network 10.0.0.0 another way we could do this is network 10.1.0.1 that means we're matching an interface with exactly 10.1.0.1 because we're using a slash 32 on the wildcard mask network 10.0.1.1 slash 32 and network 10.0.2.1 also 0.0.0.0 another slash 32 again again the networks that will be advertised are slash 24 because that's what's configured on the interface not a slash 32 that we used in the network command Okay, so hopefully you've got the network command nailed down now. You saw there that there's multiple different ways that you can get the same effect. It really doesn't matter which one you use, they're all valid. The last thing I want to cover here is the router ID. EIGRP routers identify themselves to other EIGRP routers using a router ID. And this is in the form of an IPv4 address. The router ID will default to being the highest IP address of any loopback interfaces configured on the router, or if there's no loopbacks, then it will be the highest other IP address like on a physical interface. Now, you don't want the router ID to be going up or, and down or changing. You want it to be stable because this is how the router identifies itself to other EIGRP routers. So it's recommended to either use the loopback interface or another way that you can do it is to manually specify a router ID. If you do either of those, then you know that the IP address or the router ID is definitely never going to change. So here's an example where we have not configured a loopback. I'm on example router R1 here. I do a show IP interface brief, and I can see that I've got no loopbacks on there. The highest physical address is 10.0.3.1 on interface fast 3 slash 0. To view what the router ID is, we can do a show IP protocols. So in the output of that command, I can see that my router ID is 10.0.3.1. If I did have a loopback, then even if the loopback interface is lower than the IP address on a physical interface, it will be the router ID. So I've done a show IP interface brief here, and you can see I've got loopback 0 with IP address 1.1.1.1. And when I do a show IP protocols, I can see that that is the router ID. Now, if you've got a router which doesn't have any loopback addresses on there just physical ip addresses and you've already configured eigrp if you then go and add a loopback on there it's not going to immediately become the eigrp router id it needs the eigrp process to be restarted before it will pick up the new ip address so you could disable and then re-enable eigrp or you could reboot the router that will force it to come up with that loopback address as the router id if you want to manually specify the router id the command is under the eigrp process eigrp router id and then the router ID that you want to use that has to be in the format of an IPv4 address. Now, the router doesn't need to actually have that IP address configured on the router because this isn't actually an IP address. It's just a, a router ID, but it uses the format of an IP address. So in the example here, we've said EIGRP router ID 2.2.2.2. That IP address is not actually configured on the router. 
However, real world best practice is to use an IP address that has been configured on router because it gets confusing otherwise. Okay, so that's how we configure EIGRP. Next up in the next lecture, we'll have a look at how we verify it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.